going to cost how much to get this tile tore out? Oh, hell no, this tile's staying. Hi, welcome back to U Floor Flooring Tips and Tricks. I'm your host, Zanone Hunt. Today, we're going to be installing life-proof vinyl planks over existing tile. Now, I know some of you have a question out there. Is it possible? Can you do that? Do they recommend that? Actually, if you do read the directions, you'll see that it says it can be installed over most surfaces, including tile. Now, what you want to be careful for if you're going to be installing over tile is that you're not installing over tile that has bigger than quarter of an inch grout lines. So if you use spacers that are a quarter of an inch or bigger, you're going to have to get floor leveler and skim coat over the top to fill those in. And that's just, it's not because it'll telegraph through like the old planks. It's just so that if one of the cracks lands on that grout joint, the one that's underneath, if you step on it, it may pull away from the other one. So you want to make sure they're both sitting on a flat level surface. And with an eighth inch grout line, that's almost impossible. I mean, you got to pretty much hit it right dead on. And the way tiles laid, with these small tiles that we're doing today, which I'll show you in a minute, there's no way it's gonna land on it. Well, these are on a diagonal anyway, so that doesn't even matter. But if you are going to be installing on tile and your grout lines are bigger than a quarter of an inch, you will have to use floor leveler to float those lines out. Other than that, you can just lay it right on top of it. We've done it before. I'm gonna show you what we got going on today. We have two bathrooms we're gonna be installing. And once I did the inspection on these, I realized really quickly that this is going to be a have to lay on top of install because the tear out is going to be the tear out is going to be terrible. Very dusty. It's the old way where they poured a concrete bed instead of using uh, instead of using the backer board. It's a concrete bed laid down there with all the chicken wire and all that stuff. If you've ever tore that stuff out, oh, believe me, you know that is a nightmare. So if there's any way you can get past doing that, save a little bit of money and just throw that stuff on top, that's what I would advise doing and that's what we're going to do today. It will not hurt. If you have any questions about that, leave those in the comments and I'll do my best to do the research if I don't know the answer on that and get those questions answered. Anyway, we've been doing this for quite a long time and we haven't had any issues. So we're going to jump into it today and get this thing knocked out. Let's go. All right, so in this bathroom right here, you can see the tile is laid on a diagonal. What we're going to do is we're just going to bring the floor all the way out to here. Then we're going to transition right here. And I know some of you are curious, Z, when the floor is a little bit higher and you're transitioning down to something lower, how do you do that? Because uh, I can't get mine to fit down in there and grab that U-channel. We're going to go over that today too. One more thing I wanted to show you. This baseboard is tile baseboard right here. So when you're laying your planks up in here, there's no way to put quarter round up against that. So how do you do expansion gap and all that with that? I'll tell you. That has to go. Planks, it's sterling oak. What I wanted to show you if you had any concerns about installing on the tile. As you can see right here, it says sound it's the little muffler, so it's like if you were doing laminate floor and it's the pad that you would lay, it's attached to the bottom. Then here where it says hide subfloor imperfections, that's the important part. See that right there? This little layer right here has been added to these other two layers. Now in the old days when they used to make the vinyl planks, it literally was about a sixteenth to just a little bit thicker than a sixteenth of an inch thick. And it was what it was. It was vinyl, just like sheet vinyl with a little piece of rubber on the bottom of it. So it was very flexy, you know, like it really bent like this. Uh, and with that happening, because it was so thin, if you laid that on top of subfloor that was uneven, or if you laid it on top of tile, or if you laid it on top of anything that had rock, sand, anything underneath it, it would telegraph through those little planks and you could see every line. I've been in apartments, and I'm sure you've been in apartments where they go through and just knock these out real fast, and you could see all the imperfections underneath. Laying this stuff is like laying laminate floor. If you can see imperfections through the laminate floor, then you'll be able to see it through here. But since you can't, it's very, very similar. This is a very thick layer right here that when you lay it on there, it makes this product really, really stiff. So you will not be able to see the telegraph through the planks. All right, that's all I'm gonna make that mention. So the first thing you wanna do is take this toilet tank lid off. And if not, because when you lift this toilet up, you'll forget it's on there. And I had a, I had a helper drop it into somebody's tub. And two things happened. Number one, I had to buy the lady a new toilet tank lid. And the problem was it was an old toilet. It was like an antique something. So finding the lid to fit that was almost impossible. I think we ended up having to just replace the toilet. Number two, she had a hole in her tub. I don't even remember what happened with that, but I think it cost me a lot of money. So take the toilet tank lid off before you lift it up. All right, that's my public service announcement. Now we're gonna empty this water out. First thing we wanna do is turn the water off. All right, now I got the water turned off. Now I want to flush it to get all the water out of the tank. All right, as you can see, 
the water is completely out of the tank in there. But here's the thing. We still have water in there, okay? And now this is a trick that a, uh, one of my old helpers taught me. He was a vinyl installer, carpet, so he knew little tricks. This is called a power flush, and you're just gonna get your regular bucket of water like that. I feel like it's about up to right there. Just a little under halfway, and just dump it in there really fast. And what happens, I guess the toilet can't hold that much water, so for some reason it sucks it all down in there, and as you can see, there's, there's very little water in there now. So when it comes to pulling this toilet and transferring it right over there to the tub, then we shouldn't have any issues. If the water gets spilt, it's on tile, we can clean it right up. All right, now we just need to, if you tilt it forward, it won't spill as much water. And that's removing toilet 101. We have another one in there too. There you go, that looks a little funky. I think we'll go find some gloves before we get involved in that. All right, so I spared you guys the details of removing that wax ring. It was pretty nasty, so. <laughs> Be aware of that if that's something you're gonna have to do. It's so nasty down here, I think I'm just gonna clean it up a little bit first. When there's stains underneath the floor, now's the time you wanna take care of it because once you put the floor down, it's over. You can't get that. And all this wax and nasty on here, I'm gonna hit that with some of that right there yeah, before we put down some floor. All right, so let me go. All right, so now next step is to tear off this baseboard tile right here because we have six inch baseboard. It's gonna come up to about right here. That way it'll cover up all lines, anything like that. But remember guys, when you're, when you're, top, when you're prying tile off the wall, you don't want to pry against it to, to pull it off like that. You kind of want to do it this way because if not, you can put dents in your wall all the way across. And we're going to be covering it up with baseboard, but still, if it tends to bleed all the way up, you could have drywall issues and you'll have to go back and fix that. So I got one of these right here. They're pretty nifty. It's not gonna come off easy without a fight, so. All right, that's about what's gonna be like. And uh, I know you guys don't wanna sit here and watch me tear out tile, so we'll go through this real quick. When it's time to lay the floor, we'll come back, all right? You know, in tearing this tile off, there is a bottom plate down here, a wood bottom plate. So if you're prying against that, you should be okay to pry outward like this. You just don't want to get your stuff in and pry this way because there's no stud behind the wall everywhere. So you'll end up prying a hole in the back of your tile back here. So if you're wanting to go down through the top, your best bet is to go all the way down and pry out if you can. But so far, the best method I've had is just getting, getting behind it down here where the bottom plate is and prying it out that way. See, it's coming off real clean up here at the top. The bottom is not really, it's not really gonna matter because like I say, we are gonna put new baseboard down and quarter round. So, all right, back to the hyperlapse. All right, so getting started in the bathroom, what I like to do is when I start the first row, I like to make the one against this wall be the same width as the one on the other wall. That way it's, it's pleasing to the eye. Also, we don't wanna end up with a piece against the wall that is like this big. And so you're only seeing a quarter of an inch of the plank outside of your quarter round. So I'm gonna measure the floor here, the width of that, and I'll show you our next step. All right, so we have 58 and seven eighths. Let's go in here. Now, if you're lucky enough where you've all actually laid this floor in somewhere else in the house, you can just come out and come to your floor that you've already laid and use it. Otherwise, there's two other ways you can do it. You can lay out boards and click them together, or if you have a handy dandy calculator, you can pull that out and do the math as well, but you'll have to measure the width of the plank and do all this times in and stuff like that. If you're like me, I like to visually see things. It makes it a little easier for me. So I come in here and I measure to see how many planks it's gonna to take to get to our number. And as I said in there, we're at 58 and seven eighths. So I'm gonna see how many planks fit with inside that number. All 
don't know if this is going to make any sense. So what I've done is I've put the end of my tape on a crack down there, and it came down here. And then 58, <laughs> 7 eighths falls right here. So I'm going to make a little dot with my Sharpie. This can always be wiped up with acetone later. Okay, now that I have that, what I want to do is measure from the crack to my dot. Okay, and from my crack to my dot, that's six and seven eighths. So what I want to do is split that in half, and that'll be how wide my starter piece will be. And I actually have some pieces in there that I can already use, so that's going to be great. So what is that, seven? That's like three and a half. So if I start with a three and a half inch piece, then both of my pieces should be really close to being the same size on both sides. All right, here we go. All right, so there's many ways you can cut this stuff. Uh, if I'm gonna cut long rips like this, my preferred method is a table saw. But since I just put a brand new wood blade on my table saw yesterday, I don't really even feel like going to change that back to this one. All I need are these two rips. So I'm gonna use my knife. Also, you can use an oscillating tool. We used that all day yesterday. It leaves these frayed edges on the end. If that doesn't bother you, then go ahead. I don't know, it just seems like it takes forever. So a good old razor knife works. However, cutting long rips like this and having to break them off, is a little bit challenging, so make sure you have a good pair of these dikes right here because these nippers will nip them right off. Anyway, we're gonna try with a razor blade first and see how it goes. Okay guys, we're almost ready to install the floor, but first I need to cut these door jams right here. And by doing that, I have an oscillating tool here with a vibrating blade and we'll lay that piece of floor against the trim there and then buzz these jams so that our floor can fit underneath there. But before we do that, I did want to remind you guys that now would be the perfect time to go smash that like button if you like what you're seeing so far. And also, if you guys like the videos that I'm putting out or if this is the first time you came and visit us and you're enjoying yourself so far, I do this all the time. So go ahead and smash that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so that you can be notified when I put out another video and you will become part of the DIY family in this DIY nation. All right, so let's cut these jams. Here we go. All right, so first row going down right now. As you said, we use those three and a half, three and seven sixteenths. It's width here, so we have matching width on the other side. And of course we have our handy dandy nippers right here. Just mark these freehand. It's gonna come out about right there. If you have one of these oscillating tools, whether it be battery powered or, or plug in, they're perfect for little cuts like this. I mean, yeah, you can use a table saw, a jigsaw, a razor knife, but this is pretty precise and you can just kind of curve it around the way you need it. I got a little cut here that's a little special. Alright, for me, the best way to get these started is to kind of just pull it off the wall so that you can work with it. Okay, so I did want to mention that sometimes these Vinyl planks, they only come in somewhere from four to seven different patterns. Uh, a lot of times we have them like seven different patterns, but it seems like this time they took the, the patterns and opposed to making them different, they just reversed it and then flipped it too, so it made it look different. So basically we have somewhere around four to six different patterns today to work with. So that's what we're doing. All right. So I'm going to grab some more wood. I'll be right back. Okay, so when you're installing these, you're gonna need a rubber mallet. And this is a tapping block, it's custom made for these life-proof vinyl planks. I bought it and then I, I cut this on my table saw for laminate and then I flipped over and I made this little groove here for vinyl planks because it fits up on top of the face and against it, so it makes it great for installing. But your best friend for installing this is going to be just a regular piece of flooring. This type of flooring can be very uh, deceiving and you thinking that the gaps are closed up but they're not. You'll see that there'll be a fine hairline crack on the, on, the, on the long side of it. If you don't have it tapped all the way in, you'll have issues going on later. You're like, why is my sides not closing now? So make sure when you're putting these together that you get those, those lines all the way across the long part here closed up tight. And this right here is the perfect tapping block for doing that. I'll show you how that goes here in just a second. Okay, so now I got a, uh, now I got a vent coming up. I already cut the back side of it. 
don't know how you guys feel about these vents. This one was actually big, big, you know what I'm saying? It's only 10 inches on the vent cover from here to here, but this was like 11 inches. So I came in a little bit more. So that way, if, you know, you don't want your vent cover just sliding around. So get ourselves marked up. All right, and then from the face here, not from the tongue, but from the face, I want to measure back. These are typically supposed to be about four and an eight, which is this one is. So we'll just go with the number we have here, which is looks like three and five eighths. All right, there's our hole. I'll go cut that. Come back, and we should be rolling with this one. All right. So as I was saying, if you'll take this little this little piece right here, right here, see? No. A little tap, a little love tap on our tapping block, and as you can see, that closes it up real nice. It's real smooth. See this little tapping block? If you get it and get used to using it, it's awesome. Don't forget you can always use your cutoffs from the end as your starters on the other side. They make great starters. All right, so the rest of it is pretty straightforward. We're gonna kick it into high gear. Anything else comes up that's challenging, we'll stop and we'll go over. All right, so now we gotta cut a toilet hole in our material. And there's numerous ways of doing this. You can use a compass, you can use a speed square. I just use a simple tape measure and mark some things out, but I do have some tape here and I'm gonna show you the method I do it. And the only reason I do this is because I like doing things where I don't have to get up and go grab something. If I can do something right there on the spot and I feel like I can get it done faster than it would take me if I was to go set off all the things that I need to do it a different way, then I would do that. But this has been working for me, so here's how I do it. So one way to get an accurate measurement so that you have dead center of your hole is I got, I got to take a piece of tape and stick it on there. Okay, let me show you why. Typically your little ring here, right here is seven inches. And as you can see, if I measure this one, this one's seven inches too. Okay, and so we want like maybe an eighth inch to three sixteenths gap all the way around of it. I mean, that's for expansion, but that's also just to give you a little room to play. So what I wanna do is in two spots, I wanna mark it at three and a half inches. See, and then also wanna do it this way too. And now by doing that, I actually have the dead center of this hole. So it's gonna be easier for me to pull my measurements from the tub to the, to the plus, from the cabinet to the plus, or from this edge right here to the plus, and I can get a real accurate, accurate reading. Another thing I like to do is take two boards together and go ahead and click them the way that they're gonna be laying in the floor. That way I can get the whole circle in one instead of having to cut one and then come up and try to match the other one to it. I know that it's gonna be a perfect match. So, butting the tub right here, and I will allow an eighth of an inch for expansion, even though there really is not a lot of expansion in this stuff, but. Hey, for the habit, let's just do it. So I'm going to, we're gonna say 23 and a 16. So that being said, I'll come out to 23 and a 16. I'm just gonna make a little dot because we don't know exactly where the other one's gonna land. Okay, and then right here we're going with, uh, it looks like right on the edge there is six and six and five eighths. So I'm gonna go from the bottom here, six and five eighths and make my mark. 
And then here's my other marks, as you can see, where they cross each other. That, folks, that is the dead center of that right there, mapped up with the tub and everything. Now, a couple ways to do this. Three and a half would make it really, really tight, so I like to bring it out to three and five eighths, and I'm literally just holding my number right there in the middle of the plus, and then as I take this around, I will start just circling it around, making sure that I keep three and five eighths in the dead center of my plus. And trust me, that way works. I'm gonna stick this underneath here just so it doesn't go all the way through. I don't need to drive it deep. But just enough to it sticks through. All right, so there's that. Of course, you hook your speed square onto that right there. And that's just another way of doing it. I tell y'all what, that looks nice. Beautiful. Beautiful, what a beautiful thing. All right, so this is a pool bar, and we generally use this whenever we can't, whenever we can't get back there with the tapping block, you know, and, and tap it. So what we'll do is we'll take our little, you know, the little piece we told you about earlier. I still have that black line right there that's not going away until I tighten it up. So I'll put a little scrap piece back there, and then I hook my pool bar on it. Me and my wife call this a situation bar because generally it stays in the bag until we run into a situation. And we say, get the situation bar. Look at that. One pop and it's in. It's tight. It even, even almost closed up the other side. So that's beautiful. Ladies and gentlemen, we're one strip away from getting this thing floored. Wow. That tightened everything up. I even saw this board move. Ah, must have had a gap somewhere back there. Anyway, that makes nice. All righty dighty. All right, so here's another quick tip. For our last row here, the one that's going against the wall, you wanna take your plank or planks and line them up with the plank that's right behind the plank that you're gonna be installing, which is this plank. This is directly right over top of another plank. And then I've taken another piece of flooring and we call this the tongue and not the groove. So on the groove side, I've just taken my razor knife and cut it off and that gets me up against the wall there. And now I can use that. I just go up against the wall and make my lines. I'm telling you people, this is so accurate as far as getting it close to the wall. And remember, you do want to still leave somewhat of an expansion gap. And that's not necessarily just for expansion. That's so you can get your pry bar behind there and uh, pry this thing together. Because if you use, if you cut right on this line, it may be a little bit close to the wall for you to actually get a pry bar behind it. But that is just letting you know how accurate that it does make this piece right here. So I cut on just on this side of that line right there so I can get a pry bar back there. But that right there is your piece and it's custom all the way across. Any questions on that, just let me know. Well, there you go. That's the installation of life-proof vinyl planks over tile. And I got to admit, it feels pretty good. It feels solid. And it's put together pretty well. I like this color. Anyway, we're going to have to put some baseboard on the wall, like we said, and then quarter round. I don't think I'm going to do an instructional tutorial about that. I may go over the steps on what I'm going to do over here with the transition, since it is a little bit higher on this floor, down to the other one. A lot of people are asking questions, how do you transition from high to low? Also, I put a video on how to transition higher to lower. It was a big display where I laid it out uh, doing multiple uh, installations, you know, flat to flat, higher to lower with carpet and everything like that. Anyway, go check that video out. I'll leave a link in the description for that if you're interested in that. Otherwise, we'll show you how we're going to do this one today with the vinyl planks because we didn't go over that in the video. All right, I'm going to get out of here. Stay tuned. Let me go jump over here and do something else. Now normally when you're installing a T-mold from a level to level surface, you can just take the U-channel and drop it down inside. Then the bottom part of the T-mold should reach down inside and grab a hold of it. But as you can see, since our new floor is slightly higher, we're going to have to raise that U-channel. I made this piece of wood right here. You can see it's sloped down. It's higher on one side than it is the other. And I'm going to stick that inside my little groove right here so that when I put my U-channel in, it is slightly on a slope. 
Remember, you want to put the small side facing the lower floor. Then, just nail it in with brad nails all the way across. As you can see, with our filler strip in, we can easily set our metal U-channel in, and it is at the perfect angle for our T-mold. If this would have been any higher, then I would have had to use a reducer, and my filler strip would have been flat. But, a reducer would have been too tall, so a T-mold was kind of my only option. With the U-channel installed, it's now time to put this baby in. Just start it at one end and clip it and then take a hammer and slightly tap it all the way across. This is the best method I've found. You can use your fist if you want. One T-mode installed. And believe me, this baby is locked in. Well, there you have it. One installation of life-proof vinyl plank flooring over existing tile. Here's some bonus picks from the rest of the install. I wanted to let you guys know that I recently hit 100 subscribers and I couldn't be more grateful. This job was so much fun and I hope I brought someone value out there. If you have any questions, don't forget, leave those in the comments. And if you have any ideas for future videos, also leave those in the comments. If you made it all the way to the end of the video and you haven't went and subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so YouTube will notify you when I put out a new video. And for the YouTube algorithm, go ahead and smash that like button. That'll definitely help out my channel and help us grow and push us out to more people. And this DIY nation will grow into a huge family. Thank you guys so much for watching again and I will catch you on the next one. In the meantime, take care and stay safe. Peace.